still winded <laughs> from all that flexing. <laughs> How is Skelly? I don't know. I haven't seen the guy in like a year and a half, but I heard he's involved in the next Perko challenge, so. Oh, and he might be at Lightbox. How big a portion of your drawing time should be spent on practicing gesture drawing? Um, I think it depends on your skill level and on your goals. If you're just drawing portraits, probably not that much. I mean, you still want to learn how to draw dynamic shapes. It's not just your pose that needs to be dynamic. It's just shapes in general should look interesting and dynamic. You need a lot more of that if you're drawing the figure or animals or any kind of creatures, living things that are moving. If that's the case and you're a beginner, quite a lot. I would say, you know, 20, 30 percent, maybe a little more, 40 percent. The thing is, it's hard to actually do that much gesture drawing because gesture drawing is so fast. You know, like it's hard to fill 80% of your drawing time with gesture. I mean, unless you only draw like an hour a day or something, then yeah, you could do an hour of gestures a day. But it's like, you're not gonna do five hours of gesture in a day, right? So if you, if you draw for five hours, do an hour of gesture drawings and then the, the rest of it, the other four hours, do something else. And that's plenty of gesture practice. There's so much other stuff you gotta practice. The thing I see a lot of people doing is actually just getting stuck on gesture because it is really, really important, but don't spend years focusing just on gesture. You gotta improve on these other things in order to even be able to apply gesture to those things. Like, you gotta learn structure. You have to learn how to mannequinize the body so that then you can learn how to apply gesture to a mannequin. If you're just drawing noodle people for two years, you're not really doing much good. You're being really inefficient with your practice. I would say spend a few months, get decent at gesture, get the hang of it, move on. Not completely, still do some gesture practice, but move on, do more focus on structure or learning how to shade and incorporate gesture into those other things. Make sure that they're all working together. Like if you start drawing a mannequin, does it all of a sudden get stiff because you've forgotten the gesture? Like that's not good. You need to be able to do everything. All these concepts come together. They're not individually separated things where your gesture drawings are gestural and your structure drawings are stiff. Like that's not the point. You, you gotta combine them all. What is your approach when drawing a figure twisting? Great question. So I usually think of two boxes and I try to figure out the perspective of those boxes and make sure that they feel like they're twisting. It usually makes me exaggerate it a little bit, which I kind of like. I'll usually think of two forms. Let's say it's going like this. The rib cage is facing this way and then the hips facing this way. And then let's say you got a box, box here, and then the hips going this way, kind of like that. So that's, that's a pretty extreme twist actually, but sometimes it could happen. Let's see if I could put some anatomy between and make it look all right. You got the bones right here, corner of the rib cage would be there, another corner of the rib cage there. And then you can attach the limbs and the neck to those boxes as cylinders. But anyway, you can keep going and add more and more detail on top of it. But starting with just those two very simple forms and figuring out the perspective, this one's going that way, this one's going this way, and everything in between them has to be twisted up. That to me helps a lot, even if, it, if I just spend 10 seconds on it and don't put the boxes, but just start with the bean and put a center line on each one, that does so much for me to be able to visualize the anatomy that goes on top. Any tips on how to bring more dynamic shapes into characters? One is try to avoid symmetry. That's a big one, right? Okay, there's a lot of things here, but I'll just give you one, one big piece of advice, and that is to do master studies. Find somebody who designs really good shapes and try to copy them and see what they do. How do they draw a jaw, a rib cage, a bicep, hands, right? One for me that has just brilliant shape design, Max Grecki. Just beautiful cartoony shapes that just look so fun and interesting. He pushes it further than what I would probably do in my style, because my work is a little more realistic, I guess. But if I could add 10% of what he does into mine, I think my drawings would look better. So find somebody that is like that for you, who you look at and just like, damn, those are good shapes. 
and copy it. I think you could learn good shape design just by doing that. Do you ever draw with charcoal? Bro. Do you even know me? How to add structure to my drawing while keeping the gesture? That is a great question. And that's really the whole point of gesture is to be able to add it to structure. You don't separate the two. They have to work together. So a very important thing to keep in mind is that structure doesn't necessarily mean that the form is rigid, that it's a, it's like a hard straight thing. You can bend things, you can deform them and still make them feel three dimensional. That's really what structure is, it's three dimensional form. So if you're drawing a box, okay, let's just simplify it down. You're drawing a box, but you want it to have gesture, you can bend it, you could bloat it, you could kind of deform it a little bit. You know, look at look at uh, in Pixar and Disney and like DreamWorks movies when you some buildings are not boxes. They're like all skewed and stuff and they, they feel more interesting. They feel more dynamic. They feel like they got character to them. That's because they're not just like meh, perfectly rigid things. And the same thing can be applied I mean, especially should be applied to organic things like the body. If you're using a mannequin on the body and you're trying to put structure on it, you definitely got to bend that stuff. Do not draw perfect cylinders and perfect boxes on the body. Bend it to fit the gesture. Why wouldn't you? But then going deeper, once you go beyond the mannequin and you actually start drawing muscles and bones and stuff, at that point, like there are no cylinders and boxes that's all implied with the way you put down your shadows and the way you indicate some corners and your contours and stuff so at that point yeah you're, you got to be designing all of the shapes the all the organic shapes to flow with the gesture while also showing some of the structure this is not an easy thing and it's hard for me to just kind of explain but i have many demos in my anatomy course where i'm talking about this and I'm, sh I'm showing exactly this concept of combining gesture, structure and anatomy together. So if you want to see this in a more longer format presented with a real drawing, go to the anatomy class. Can I draw using my feet and not be a weirdo? Probably not, <laughs> but you're an artist and you got to stand out somehow. What? With the, from the back? Did you really draw genitals in the video you censored? Uh, no, I did not. In fact, you could see on YouTube, if you look up that video on YouTube, you could see at the very end, an uncensored version of what I actually drew. How to improve quick sketching quickly. <laughs> okay. Well, that's funny. You're not actually supposed to quick sketch quickly. You, you actually, quick sketch slowly or not really slowly, just quick sketch at a normal pace. Um, but when you're doing quick sketch, you don't pick up the pace, you you just simplify more. You draw less things and that allows you to draw a thing in less time because you have less to draw. You don't think faster, you don't draw faster, you just get rid of all the stuff that takes a long time to draw and you keep only the really, really essential things to get a good impression of something. And there could be multiple ways of doing that. It just depends on what you're using. Like you could just do a gesture drawing where you're focused on the gesture. You could do a mannequin drawing where you're focused on really basic volumes of each part of the body, right? And then you'll run out of time. Or you could focus on value where you start right away with the side of the pencil and you're kind of mapping in the kind of abstract shadow shapes but you're removing all that other stuff. You're just focusing on value. But yeah, you, it, most of it is just removing all the stuff that takes a long time, like measuring, right? You, you're not, if you're doing a quick set, you don't have time to measure in the same way you do when you're doing, you know, a five to 10 hour portrait. I'm gonna spend an hour in that five or so hours measuring to make sure everything's in the right place. In a quick sketch, there's no way. So I don't even attempt it. I just trust my gut. And if I make a mistake with my proportions, well, on to the next sketch. And if I'm doing any kind of shading in a quick sketch, which is really difficult, it's mostly gonna be something like, I put in a shadow that's a very, very flat shadow shape. I maybe while I'm doing that, I 
put in an impression of an edge. And then I'll put in like a gradation for a half tone, take my eraser and like a, a little, quick little swipe for a highlight. And that's it, right? I don't have any time for details of shading. It's just the impression. Big half tone shape, big shadow shape, highlight. So stop quick sketching quickly and quick sketch smartly. <laughs>